The British Royal Navy recently stated that Britain will send an aircraft carrier strike group to the Indo-Pacific next month. China's three main warships were delivered to the Navy in Hainan, and Xi Jinping said he would not hesitate to fight a bloody war. The British government recently announced that a fleet of naval vessels led by the aircraft carrier HMS Queen Elizabeth will depart for the Asia-Pacific region in May for a 28-week mission. The British Ministry of Defense said that this trip to Asia is the largest contemporary British naval and air armed overseas dispatch operation. The HMS Queen Elizabeth Carrier Group will visit 40 countries, including India, Japan, South Korea, and Singapore, covering around 26,000 nautical miles and conduct joint exercises with Japanese and South Korean forces. The carrier group includes two destroyers, two frigates, a nuclear submarine, and two logistics vessels from the Royal Navy. The group will also take part in exercises with warships and aircrafts from its other allies, including the US and Canada. This huge maritime military force will soon arrive in the South China Sea, increasing the tension in the South China Sea and Taiwan Strait. The former has become a favorite sea area for aircraft carriers from various countries. Recently, the Chinese Navy has also been making moves. On April 26, the Chinese Navy's Liaoning aircraft carrier returned north from eastern Taiwan to the East China Sea. And on April 28, the Chinese Navy's Shandong aircraft carrier appeared in the southern waters for a so-called relief cruise. Just before that, on April 23, the Chinese Navy had three main warships delivered to the Navy, and Xi Jinping even personally went to Sanya City to attend a high-profile ceremony and inspect the warships on board. The three warships are a Type 075 Hainan Amphibious Assault Ship, Pennant No. 31, a Type 055 Dalian Destroyer, Pennant No. 105, and a Type 094A Nuclear Ballistic Missile Submarine, Long March 18. Hainan is able to carry an estimated 30 attack helicopters and hundreds of troops, and has an estimated displacement of about 40,000 tons. Dalian, with a displacement of 12,000 tons, is China's newest missile destroyer. The Long March 18 strategic nuclear submarine can carry 12 JL-3 submarine-launched ballistic missiles with a range of more than 10,000 kilometers, which can cover the U.S. mainland without leaving the first island chain. The induction of the three warships has greatly increased the strength of China's naval forces in the southern war zone. China's recent high-profile military actions in the South China Sea and Taiwan Strait has made Taiwan and many countries in the South China Sea feel pressured and uneasy. And Xi Jinping's April 25th speech about not hesitating to fight a bloody war has elevated the tension. On April 25th, Xi said during a visit to the Red Army Xiangjiang Battle Memorial Park in Guilian, Guangxi Province, that if the difficulties are any greater, just think of the Red Army's long march and the bloody battle of Xiangjiang. She said the secret to the success of the communist revolution is to persevere in the most difficult times so as to continue to achieve miraculous victories. Xi's remarks inadvertently reveal the true nature of his current situation, which is that Xi is also in the midst of the most difficult time. Xi Jinping's words, no matter how bloody the battle, have two meanings to the external and internal sides. Externally, the Chinese Communist Party's theft of technology, wolf warrior diplomacy, and cover-up of the initial coronavirus outbreak that led to the global pandemic have all caused the United States and its allies to begin blocking and pressuring the Chinese Communist Party on all fronts, including technology, trade, diplomacy, and the military, putting the CCP in an unprecedented predicament. The war she mentioned may refer to the reunification of Taiwan by force, or a war against the United States, Japan, Australia, and other democratic countries. Internally, Xi Jinping also faces pressure from within the CCP. Later this year, the CCP will hold the seventh plenary session of the 19th CCP Central Committee, at which the leadership of the 20th CCP National Congress would be finalized according to the CCP's usual practice. Deng Xiaoping, the Communist Party's senior statesman, and his peers once established a party rule 
requiring that the Communist Party's top leaders be replaced once every 10 years to prevent a repeat of Mao Zedong's lifelong dictatorship that brought the Communist Party to the brink of collapse. However, in March 2018, the National People's Congress passed a constitutional amendment to remove the limit of two consecutive terms for the president of the country. Since Xi Jinping took over as the top leader of the CCP in 2012, he has investigated and punished more than 500 senior officials at and above the vice-provincial level in the name of anti-corruption, eliminating many opposing forces within the party, but also making many enemies who would be delighted to have Xi removed from power immediately. So Xi Jinping's talk of a bloodbath battle is a signal for the further encirclement of opposition forces within the party. On April 29th, official sources confirmed that Song Xue, the former deputy chief of staff of the Chinese Communist Navy, was investigated and stripped of power on April 8th. Song Xue was the deputy director of the Navy's equipment department from 2009 to 2012, and he was also the deputy chief of the J-15 carrier aircraft takeoff and landing test mission, so he had long-standing contacts with the military system. In addition, Song's main promotion period was when Jiang Zemin's spokesmen Guo Baoxiong and Xu Taiho were in charge of the military as vice chairman of the military commission, which was also when the Chinese Communist Navy was building ships on a large scale and renovating the Liaoning aircraft carrier. Some analysts believe that the fall of Song Xue may be related to corruption in the field of weapons and equipment manufacturing, but also Xi Jinping's attempt to cleanse the military of anti-Xi forces. Xi Jinping's emergency call to halt the IPO of Amped Group and Alibaba's fine of 18.2 billion RMB were widely interpreted as manifestations of internal strife in the CCP. It is rumored online that Ma's backstage boss is Jiang Zemin's family, Xi's biggest political foe since he took office. Zhang Qingli, vice chairman of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, published an article on May 1st in the official theoretical journal of the Communist Party of China titled Qiu Shi. It emphasized the need to resolutely safeguard the core position of General Secretary Xi Jinping in the party central committee and the core of the party as a whole, and resolutely safeguard the authority and centralized leadership of the party central committee, and opposed the idea of self-confidence, blackmailing the central committee, and disrespecting and disobeying the leadership of the Central Committee. While expressing his loyalty to Xi, Zhang Qingli also exposed that some forces within the CCP currently do not respect or obey Xi Jinping's leadership. Premier Li Keqiang has also repeatedly disagreed with Xi Jinping in his public statements. Wang Qishan, the current Chinese vice chairman, was once Xi's most reliable political ally and his right-hand man in fighting corruption as a means to combat dissidents. But the investigation of Wang Qishan's right-hand man, Dong Hong, last month showed a rift in the relationship between Wang and Xi. On April 20th, at the opening of the Bowel Forum for Asia, the leading international forum hosted by the Chinese Communist Party, Vice Chairman Wang Qishan appeared and said he was only a temporary host who was filling in for Xi Jinping, which reflects the high respect our China have for our chairman. Last month, former Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao's article reminiscing about his mother was blocked by the Chinese Communist Party authorities. On February 25th this year, at China's National Poverty Alleviation Summary and Commendation Conference, Xi Jinping said that the people who have escaped poverty are not worried about food or clothing. Compulsory education, basic medical care, safety of drinking water, and housing security are also guaranteed. A few days ago, the Communist Party's official media, CCTV, reported that poverty eradication in Luonan County, Shanxi Province, was faked, with no water available for resettlement housing for poor households, and the water faucets were mere decorations. Let's go back to Xi Jinping's statement about not hesitating about fighting a bloody war. If Xi Jinping is referring to a foreign war, 
the unification of Taiwan by force or a war with the United States, Japan, and other democratic countries in the South China Sea, this should happen only after Xi Jinping's successful re-election at the 20th Communist Party Congress. If Xi Jinping goes to war before the 20th Congress, his political opponents will use the military force to avoid cooperation, leading to Xi's defeat. Even with the full cooperation of the military, it is almost impossible to defeat the U.S. military with the CCP's current military capabilities. If China attacks Taiwan, it will be difficult to succeed if U.S. and Japan intervenes. War with Japan over the Diaoyu Islands is almost impossible because the U.S. and Japan has just reaffirmed that U.S.-Japan security regulations apply to the Diaoyu Islands. A war with India is also unlikely because China's current military strength is not capable of dealing with both the eastern and western fronts. A skirmish with the Philippines is a possibility, but Xi will be under even greater international pressure. If the war is lost, Xi Jinping will be ousted from power and his fate will be miserable. But if Xi Jinping's bloodbath war refers to internal fighting within the top circle of the CCP, a new round of purges within the CCP will soon be underway. For Xi Jinping, whether he goes to war with the other countries or not, a war against the CCP's internal political rivals is inevitable anyway. His best strategy would most likely be to arrest Jiang Zemin, Zheng Qinghong and other political enemies as soon as possible and make their sins public. After all, there are better chances of winning a war against the party's internal political adversaries than a war with foreign countries.